All right, making his way to the ring. That's Thomas Tate. Coming in tonight, 36 and 5, 26 wins by way of knockout. This will be his third attempt at a world title. First time was way back in 1992 against Julian Jackson for the WBC middleweight crown, losing that on a 12 round decision. Tried one more time for the middleweight title in May of 94, got stopped in two rounds by Roy Jones Jr. And that was at 160 pounds, gives you an idea of what how long ago that was. Jones, of course, is the 175 pound champion. Went on to win a lesser title after that, the 12 round uh, decision win over Joseph Chiwanuka for the BU title but as far as major titles go this is his first crack here and uh, all of 33 years of age pro career started in 1989 as the graphic says 253 professional rounds, hoping that the third time is a charm as the expression goes. And yet, meine Damen und Herren, the Weltmeister, Sven Michael Buffer now joining us as our Opa. ring announcer, and he's going to bring in Sven Atke. Atke will, will begin his ring walk. Atke coming in tonight 15 0. Only two wins by way of knockout. So, uh, Certainly the heavier punching of the two, if you were to handicap this fight, would be Thomas Tate. Atke shocked the world with a decision win over Charles Brewer. That was in October of 98. Stopped Giovanni Nardiello in three rounds, sending him out on a stretcher. So much for not heavy punching. And then a 12 round decision win over Gabe Hernandez. That was back in May of this year. All fights being in Germany. He's fought only outside of Germany one time. That was in Austria. Winning an eight-round decision over there. So uh, looking to see as, as far as third times are a charm, if he can defend the title for the third time successfully. He stayed busy. Both of those defenses coming in 1999. Only one fight in 99 for Thomas Tate. And that was a war with Murky Sosa, one of the fights of the year thus far. Stopping Sosa in the 10th round, but Sosa had Tate hurt many times during that fight. And Tate uh, finally stopping the uh, steel chin Sosa in the 10th round, had him down several times throughout the fight. Couldn't finish him until later. That was for the NABF title. <coughs> Won that NABF title from the same Joseph Chiwanuka that he won the uh, WBU title from. But tonight it's for the big money, big world title. Sven Atke is the champion and we're in his backyard outside of Berlin. Coming to you tonight from the, what they call Bordlin Hall in Magdeburg. Magdeburg, about an hour outside of Berlin. And there he is, Sven Atke. See, undefeated professional, didn't turn pro until 1997. He's 32 years of age. Was 30 when he turned pro. Remarkable accomplishment when you think about it. Michael Buffer now, with the official introductions. Our special singing guest here this evening. She is the star of the Phantom of the Opera in Hamburg. Here she is here to sing this evening three anthems. First, please rise as she sings to honor our referee from Italy, the National Anthem of Italy.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing as our special guest, Miss Colby Thomas, continues to sing our second anthem here to honor our challenger from the United States, the Star Spangled Banner. So proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous night on the ramparts we watched were so gallantly Und jetzt, meine Damen und Herren, der deutsche Nationalhymne. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Colby Thomas. Meine Damen und Herren, willkommen in Bitterland Halle Magdeburg. Sauerland Promotions, Sport Media präsentiert zwölf Runden lang die IBF Weltmeisterschaft im Super Mittelgewicht. Twelve rounds of boxing for the IBF Super Middleweight Championship of the world. Executive Director, Jean-Marcel Nartz, representing the IBF. European Boxing Commissioner for the IBF, Benedetto Montella, representing the BDB, Herr Helmut Wassendam. The scoring for this bout will be done by three judges assigned at ringside. From the USA, Eddie Cotton. From Great Britain, John Coyle. Deutschland, Heinrich Mummelt, and the referee in charge of the action when the bell rings from Italy, Raffaella Agioles. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for. Und jetzt, meine Damen und Herren, in Magdeburg, Deutschland. Uh, let's get her!
Introducing first in the red corner, Del Rote Eka. Wearing black, he weighs in at 75.1 kilo. His professional record, he has 41 bouts with 36 victories, including 26 knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, from Houston, Texas, USA, here is the IBF number one ranked super middleweight contender in the world, Meine Damen und Herren, präsentiert the Rush Thomas Feisty K. And in the blue corner, and the blue Ecke in schwarz grün Hose, wearing black with green, he weighs 76.0 kilo. His professional record is perfect. 15 bouts, 15 victories. Meine Damen und Herren, here is the Weltmeister aus Berlin, Deutschland, the reigning and defending undefeated IBF super middleweight champion of the world, Sven the Phantom Oldham. Okay, that's your referee, Rafael Agioles. I'm still here. In case you thought you lost me during the national anthems and Michael Buffer's introductions. The IBF super middleweight title. Benedetto Montello here, supervising for the IBF. Agioles, as I mentioned, that's your referee. We're scheduled for 12. See if we can finally get underway after this long show. Very tough on a fighter. You warm up in the ring. And you're all sweaty, and then you get there, and you've got to sit through almost 15 minutes of national anthems and, and introductions. But uh, we're finally started here, and here we go. Both fighters, orthodox, right-handed fighters. Certainly the more experienced of the two. There's no comparison. 41 professional fights. Thomas Tate out of Detroit, Michigan. His brother Frank, former middleweight champion of the world, lost that title to Michael Nunn. Fought a couple of wars with Virgil Hill at 175 pounds. Is still active. It's actually ballooned up to cruiserweight on occasion. Tate had some of his good days here at 160 pounds. Now fighting, of course, at 168. Holds the NABF title at 168 pounds. Also held the WBU version of the 68 title. Was rolling along, along real well undefeated back in 1991 when he ran into Percy Harris fighting in Italy for the IBF Intercontinental title. Good start here right now by Thomas Tate. Harris beat him over the 12 rounds. Some concern in the corner already of uh, Atke. Tate really establishing the jab here early in the first round. Crowd trying to get behind the German champion. Sensing he needs something right now to get him started. A little more than halfway gone in the first round. Tate's pro career started way back in 1989. He's a 10-year veteran, stopping Maurice Doherty in three rounds. Has good punching power, as we mentioned. 26 knockouts and 35 wins. Can't take anything away from him. Aki didn't start his pro career until March of 97. Winning a six-round decision over Eric Davis in Berlin. He was 32 years of age at that time. Tate's only 33 now. Excuse me, he wasn't 32 at the time. He was 30 at the time. He's 32 now. He is Atke. Tate, 33. Very strong first round for the challenger. 
Only one German judge on board for this fight and one American, so uh, perhaps John Coyle, the British judge, will be the determining factor should this fight go to distance. Good counter right by both fighters on the inside coming to the end of round one. Very strong round for the challenger, Thomas Tate. Mein Junge, pass auf, wenn du zum Korb haust, musst du schnell hauen, haut den linken Hahn rüber. Hast du das gesehen? Ja. Und du hast deine Linke dabei fallen lassen. Gut, alles klar. Ich werde dich dirigieren lassen, dann noch Sport machen zum Schluss. Ja. Organisieren, finden wir das gut, sehr gut. Reagiert auch drauf. Aber dann musst du auch gehen. Verstehst du? Ja. Gut, mein Junge. Und mit der Linken abschließen, das ist bessere Sicherung. Gut. Noch was? Oh, ist das schon gut. Das ist doch klar. See veteran cut man Denny Mancini in the corner of Atki. He's in, in our opening bout. The corner with uh, Rudiger Mai. Certainly Europe's number one cut man, if not uh, one of the best in the world. Round two. Round two, we're scheduled for 12. This is the IBF Super Middleweight Championship of the World Champion, Sven Aki. He's in the black and green. Thomas Tate in the solid black. Very good first round for the challenger, Tate. As you see, establishing that very sharp jab. Aki's corner between rounds, is brought, as much as I could understand, would like him to pick up the action and come in and uh, counter punch a little bit and try to get Tate going backwards. Nice good left-right combination by the challenger. Tate continues to move forward though and tried to keep Aki fighting going backwards. No, I'm not Werner Schneider. I'm Arnie Tokyo Rosenthal. Those are our German graphics. Coming to you on the Cedric Kushner Sports Network. Hope you're enjoying our show. We bring you this fight worldwide. Aki trying to land combinations on the inside. Tate's been in with some of the heaviest punches in boxing. Most notably Roy Jones, who stopped him in two. But Julian Jackson, considered one of the heavier punching middleweights at the time, he managed to go the 12 round distance with him. Tyrone Trice was a pretty good heavy puncher in his time. Chiwanuka considered a heavy puncher. He turned the tables on Chiwanuka as he did with Murky Sosa. Distance shouldn't be a problem for Tate. He's been the 12 round distance six times in his pro career, 11 rounds once, and 10 rounds on numerous occasions. Aki, of course, has been 12 rounds three times, twice in world title situations, once winning the WBC Intercontinental title from Asmir Voshin, that was back in May of 98. Coming on the 42nd mark in round two. Not as dominant a round for Tate, but certainly a round that I've got him winning. And if he can keep it up through the end of the round, uh, they'll put a couple in the bank. Crowd goes wild any time that Aki makes any kind of move forward. Aki's starting to find the range. Not enough necessarily to pull out this round, but uh, certainly starting to figure out Tate a little bit better there as he drops in a jab and slips Tate's right nicely, but that jab's been very good for Tate. Round Round two action, as you can see, Aki trying to get the range, trying to make Tate fight going backwards instead of vice versa, which it was most of round one and a half of round two. 
Certainly, uh, it seemed though at the end of the second round, good range being found by the champion. He backs up, he dropped his left hand. To begin round number three, corner at Tate telling him that when Aki backs up, he drops his hands. Well, let's see if he can take advantage of that. First thing is you got to get Aki to keep fighting going backwards. Excellent first two rounds for the challenger, but he knows he's in Germany, he has to really pick things up. Based on his knockout record, I would say Tate coming here looking for a knockout. Based on his knockout record, I would say Atke looking for a 12 round decision win. He's only got two knockouts in his 15 wins. However, just when you thought that Aki was a light puncher, Giovanni Nardiello carried out on a stretcher in the first defense of the title. So, it's all about winning. Jab's been the key right now for Tate. Aki's moments in the first two rounds have all come from counter punching. Trying to drop that right in after slipping like you saw there. Tate only stopped one time in his career and that of course was by the hands of Roy Jones Jr. but it was a devastating two round knockout. Kept him out of the ring after that for over a year. Coming back about 18 months later to beat Joseph Chiwanuka. Other losses in the career, as we mentioned earlier, Percy Harris, his first loss, Julian Jackson for the middleweight title. And then uh, to Rocky Gannon, journeyman middleweight. Kind of surprised everybody on that one. He ballooned up to 174 pounds for that fight, realized he couldn't fight up at that weight. He lost his WBU version of the 68 pound belt to Silvio Bronco over in Italy. Had six straight wins since the Bronco loss. Actually, the Bronco fight was for the 160 pound version of the BU title. Nope, correction again, it was for 168. Typo on our score sheet here. Coming on the 22nd mark in round number three, pretty much a lackluster round for both fighters, but enough that uh, perhaps Aki will be able to steal this round as he's coming on strong in the last 40, 30 seconds or so. Once again, seems to find the range near the end of the round and uh, maybe enough to steal it. Big sellout crowd here, as you can see, at uh, Bordelin Hall. We're in Magdeburg, Germany. Let's listen in here in the corner of Aki. Seconds out, please. Ring fight, and run the pier. Round four. Round four was scheduled for 12. Improved third round for the champion, enough so that I gave it to him, stealing the round more or less in the last 30 seconds. Pace slowing down considerably. It's 29 28 on my card right now for Thomas Tate. Tate's in the black shorts, Aki in the black and green. Nobody down thus far. Referee Rafael Argiola is very inconspicuous. Hasn't had to do much. Can't remember even one clinch. There's the wife of Sven Aki. Watching with quite a bit of concern, as you can imagine. 
Looking to see if he can defend the title he won from Charles Brewer for the third time successfully. Tate continues using the jab as his key weapon. Hasn't been able to follow it up though with a good right. His corner told him that when Aki moves backward, he drops his right hand. Excuse me, drops his left, leaving him open for that counter right. We've yet to see Tate be able to take advantage of it. Some of those things easier said than done. Tate trying to drop the right. Aki just a little too quick for him as we're more than halfway gone in the fourth round. Aki tries to move, gets inside, doesn't do much though when he gets there. Right now Tate seems to be able to beat him with one hand. Tate again throws the right from outside, can't seem to find the spot, needs to take a little bit more of a step in perhaps on that second jab. Really giving a bit of a uh, jab lesson, looks like a jab machine right now. My friend Chuck McGregor would call it. Crowd goes wild on a one punch landed by Aki in the round. Aki gets on the inside, drops a combination in. Tate needs to stay busy though in the last stanza of these rounds. He's not going to have the judges swayed by the crowd. Otke's strictly fighting in spurts at this point. Just another spurt for the champion. Not enough to win the round, not in my opinion, not even close. There's that one combination that landed in the last 30 seconds of round four, but that was all that Aki did in the round. Seemed to be all Thomas Tate before then, just jabbing Aki to death. Not able to drop that right in, though. Other action from the same round. There's that same combination again. But we're getting the German feed, so we're going to see everything that Aki lands. Perhaps not as much from Tate. Second down place, Empire of the Flip, round five. We begin round five, Thomas Tate the challenger. Taking a slight edge of my cards up 39 to 38. I've got him winning rounds one, two, and four. Gave the third round to the champion. Aki's starting to pick up the pace. Hasn't started any of the rounds fast. It's about the quickest we've seen him come out of his corner. He's already slowing back down into that that shell, but now his jab's starting to land. Every time I say he's finding the range, he seems to lose it. Motor Wilfred Sauerland rooting on his world champion. gone in round five. This is scheduled for 12. Distance both fighters know well. Aki knows it well in spite of the fact that he's only had 15 professional fights. 
Tate went 12 rounds the first time in a losing cause way back in 1991 against Percy Harris. Still trying to drop that right hand in, just can't seem to find the range. Pulls back a little bit when he throws it. That could have a little bit to do with it as well. Maybe if he leaned in a little bit. Aki trying to get a little more aggressive. Wild right hand over the top right now. Tate getting a little frustrated perhaps. A little welt under the left eye now of Thomas Tate. There's that right, finally drops in. Catches Aki off balance. See if Tate can follow up. Aki showing good lateral motion right now. Keeping that left hand dangerously low though. Tate starting to be able to find the range with that right. Coming on strong at the end of round five. Round that seems to be in the control of the champion. The wrestling on the inside, head's getting a little sloppy. Fifth round action. There's that right over the top. You could see, didn't so much buckle the legs of Aki as caught him off balance. Earlier in the round, Aki, once again, using the word range, finding the range with that jab, has not been able to do it consistently, though. Referee Argiola is warning um, Atki to keep the shots up. I heard Denny Mancini chime in there, say thank you. Always the proper British man. Round six for schedule for 12. IVF Super Middleweight Championship on the line. Referee Argiola is calling a halt in the action. Let's see, might be some loose tape on the glove of Thomas. Nope, too much Vaseline on the face of Thomas Tate. We mentioned it seemed to be a little welt under his left eye. He might have been putting that on as extra precautionary measure. Didn't get past referee Rafael Argiola's though. Time back in. Take a look at Tate's cornerman. Tate continues to pepper with the jab. Now trying to go downstairs for the first time in the fight. Brought the hands down right away of Aki and was able to come right back upstairs with the left jab. Mother of Sven Aki. Showing quite a bit of concern as well. Seems to be slipping a little bit behind. Again, unofficially on my card, 49-47. He's only won the third round. Aki moving in now. As Tate holding on. Tate pawing at that left eye. Tate swelled up pretty good in his last fight against Murky Sosa so much that he hasn't fought since January as we're more than halfway gone in the sixth. Like he's starting to really land nicely here right now. As Tate fighting going backwards for the first time in the fight. Perhaps that eye's got something to do with it. Going to that protection state. He wants to get inside that jab. That's his fight. Can't be Tate's fighting on the outside. Tate too slick a boxer for Aki. Aki's starting to get on the inside right now. Getting a lot more aggressive. Good defense. Those punches are not hitting him. Landing on the gloves. Nice right over the top. And Tate holding on again. Shakes his head over his corner. Says he's okay. 
Certainly the champion's finest round thus far. Got Tate momentarily shutting off that jab machine and throwing wild rights from the outside. Good aggressive round. Spanaki seems to be back in this fight now. Sixth round action, a good one from the champion. You can see Aki moving on the inside, finally landing that right hand, had to throw three wild shots to get it, but it was worth it. And um, that left it certainly caused some discomfort to the left eye of the challenger, Thomas Tate. Continued to pour at it throughout the round. The mother is Fenaki looking very vocal right there as we start the second half of this championship fight. It's scheduled for 12. We're in round seven. Nobody touched the canvas yet. Very good sixth round, the best round of the fight for the champion Aki. Making it at least a one point fight on my card. I still got Tate up 58-57, giving round six and three to the champion. Tate needs to reestablish that jab to keep things good. Got caught though with another counter. Inside fight is not gonna be Tate's fight. Aki really moving in and starting to challenge Tate. Left hook landing nicely twice so far this round. Lands again there. Promoter Wilfred Sauerland in a situation here. Tate coming in as the mandatory. Has no options on Thomas Tate. So only good for him if Sven Aki wins. There's Aki's wife sitting alongside of Sauerland. Dowling, promoter of Henry Masca, Axel Schultz. He and Peter Cole vie for the title of who's the best promoter in Germany, if not Europe. More than halfway gone in round seven. Another good round for the champion. Seems to really be taking the fight to Tate now. Tate totally out of his game plan, the plan that worked so well for him in the early rounds. Just jab, 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 and throw that right. Tate seems a little fatigued. His mouth open right now, getting hit with all kinds of counter shots on the inside. Breathing heavily through the mouth, and very surprisingly to see Thomas Tate out of gas this early in the fight. Most of those shots being caught on the gloves now of Aki as Aki moves in. He's got Tate fighting going backwards and Tate doesn't fight well going backwards any more than Aki did. Good sharp combinations on the inside by Aki. Big momentum shift in this fight. Early rounds all Tate. Middle rounds right now seem to be going to the champion. Tate caught napping there. He had a big right hand from Otke. Tate's totally lost his composure and big end of the round. For Sven Otke as he talks to the crowd on his way back to his corner. Wilfred Sauerland, promoter, up on his feet. Crowd really liking the way Otke's taking it right now to the veteran, Thomas Tate. Seems to be a slight nosebleed, though, coming from the right nostril of Sven Aki. 
bloß immer aufpassen, das ist trotzdem gefährlich, ja? Hängt Marx. Er dröscht einfach mit. Nicht zu lange drin bleiben. Seventh round action, as you saw there. Very characteristic of how the round went. Very good round for Atki. Tate going into his shell. Totally taken out of his game plan right now. That jab that was working so well for him seems to have disappeared. <laughs> so we begin round eight, we see Wilfred Sauerland replay of how he felt at the end of round seven. Biggest round of the fight thus far for the champion Sven Aki. On my card, it's all tied up right now, 67-67. Last two rounds, six and seven, along with round number three going to the champion. The jab that was working so well, as you see there for Thomas Tate, that's his key to the fight. He's got to keep Aki moving backwards. Last two rounds, that jab hasn't been able to keep Atki on the outside. Tate looked fatigued at the end of round seven. Seems to have gotten a little bit of gas back right now. But seems to go to sleep there and allow Atki to get on the inside and throw those sharp combinations. Jab working now for Atki. Seems to be out jiving Tate. Aki's is a much stronger jab. Tate is more of that bothersome, flicking type of jab. Big welts under both eyes of Thomas Tate right now. There's some blood coming from the nostril of Sven Aki. Good right lead by Aki. He just pushes, gets a warning from referee. Rafael Argiolas, not to uh, push like that, but you can see at this point starting to look like the stronger of the two, manhandling Tate, who seems very tired, exerting a lot of effort with that herky-jerky motion, but not throwing anything behind it. Under a minute to go now in the round. Tate totally out of his game plan and... Uh, Big shift right now towards the champion who's in black and green, Sven Atke. Tate trying to establish something right now, but gets his head spun around by a nice right lead by the champion. Doesn't want to throw that right uppercut from the outside. Tate does not want to do that. Continues throwing wild right hands. Not taking a step in on that second jab is costing Tate a lot of time and, and effort. Nice three bunch combination set up on the jab, and it was all of a sudden, as we mentioned, Atki out jabbing Tate in round eight. Able to put some good body work together as well. To start round number nine, champion Sven Atke starting to turn the tables on Thomas Tate. A lot of people in the know in boxing, including this reporter, thought Tate would be a uh, prohibitive favorite. Right now, I've got Aki up by one point, 77-76, certainly taking control. 
managed to take Tate out of his game plan. That plan was to keep that jab going and eventually drop the right hand in. The problem is the right hand has not been able to land for Tate. And the right counter right, as you saw there, is working very well now for Aki and starting to close up the left eye of Thomas Tate. There's Aki's mother not happy with the tactics of Tate. Probably would like to see a little more action from the referee, Rafael Argioles out of Italy. You're wondering about the judges in this fight, one American, one German, and one from Great Britain. Johnny Coyle, he'll be the one from Great Britain that might have a lot to uh, say about the outcome of this fight. Hey, trying to pick things up right now. Heavy swelling under both of his eyes. Nice body attack again, right lead. Tate comes frolicking back, head's getting a little sloppy on the inside. Argiola's is going to talk to the fighters. Stopping the action right now. Let's see what this is about. And it appears the cut has opened on the left eye when those heads got sloppy, as I mentioned. Opened up a bad cut on the left eye of the champion, Sven Aki. Under a minute to go in round number nine, and if it's caused by a headbutt, of course, we'd go to the scorecards at this point. I'm not sure that would be to Tate's advantage. Boy, this cut's real bad. Kenny Mancini's going to have his work cut out for him in the corner of Sven Aki. Tate looking to tattoo that cut right now, but if this fight gets stopped on, stopped on cuts, it may not be to the advantage of the challenger. He's going to win these rounds and not worry so much about tattooing the cut, or perhaps be to his advantage to knock Aki cold right now, not leave it to the scorecards. Aki fighting a little more cautiously now. Can't wait to get back to that corner and have uh, the situation evaluated by Premier Cutman Mancini. It's definitely a nasty cut. Certainly fight-stopping caliber. Coming near the end, the momentum shift one more time in this fight. Not a bad round for the challenger. Take a look at where these heads are going to come together. It is a big right. Now the question is, that's where the cut came from. This may not been a butt. Aki's wife seems very concerned there. See if we can get another angle on it. There's Denny Mancini. They let him in the ring to go to work on that cut. Referee has declared, though, that it's from a head butt. We saw that big right hand, though. Certainly looked like a right hand from where we're sitting. Right five, we're on the team. Round 10. Round 10, keep a close eye on the left eye of Sven Aki. Cut very bad from what the referee called an accidental headbutt, but the replay, at least the replays that we've seen, clearly showed it was caused by a right hand. And Tate going at it. And I wonder if his corner's clear on the fact that it's caused by a headbutt. May not be to his advantage unless he's very secure right now that he's ahead on points. I've got the fight 86-86 all even going into round 10. Eye bleeding again 
Takes at least a round for that adrenaline to take effect. So it will be to Atkins. Certainly advantage to keep wrestling on the inside or keep moving far away on the outside away from that stiff jab. Got to watch out for that right hand right now because if that blood is flowing into his eye and he can't see the right hand coming, Tate could just put him to sleep. Tate probably a little concerned right now about some of those rounds that he thought he had, could have had in the bank and gave away as we're more than halfway gone in the 10th round. This is scheduled for 12. IBF Super Middleweight Championship on the line. Otke's the champion, Tate the challenger. The story right now, though, is that left eye of Otke. Otke doing a good job staying on the outside, out of range from Tate. Tate trying to drop that right hand over the top and you wonder whether Otke can see it coming. The way he's running now on his bike makes you think he's having trouble seeing. Still almost a minute to go in this round. I'm sure Denny Mancini would like to get his hands on that cut one more time and try to get him through the championship rounds. Makes you wonder about a replay rule or something. Referee calls that an unintentional head, but replay clearly shows punch caused by a right hand. Aki continues to circle out backwards, and uh, Tate not pressing the action here in the last 30 seconds. Content to jab from the outside. Now the heads come together again on the inside. Aki trying to steal the round, but can't run and not throw any punches and win the round. Not a bad one again for Tate. Okay. No two. Yeah, yeah, good. Can you see it? Can you see it? Tenth round action, you see Tate trying to back up Aki and take advantage of going to work on that eye. See if we can get a good close look there. Just how bad, it's a bad deep cut. In a place where, depending on which way the wind is blowing, can certainly blow into that eye. And a blind to make him very susceptible to the right hand. Well, we're in the championship rounds. This is scheduled for 12. Oddly enough, the big stories turned out to be right now the left eye of Sven Atke. Let's see if they did a better job controlling the flow of blood than they did the previous round. He's had to stay on his bicycle and continue circling around. And anyway, wait, timeout called here now by Raphael Argiola. He's gonna he's gonna bring the doctor in, and I didn't even see the. That's unusual. It didn't start to flow again. Doctor's gonna take a look at that eye. You know, if they feel that Aki's ahead in their corner, they may be content to have this fight stopped and go to the scorecards, but it looks like they're gonna let the fight go on. Argiola's conferring with the doctor. He's stopping the fight. And it's not clear how Aki's corner feels about this. We're gonna have to go to the scorecards here. Now it's funny, you never know how situations work like this. You really wonder. Aki's trying to quiet the crowd. Tate comes out. I think Tate thinks he won the fight. I'm not sure that his corner understands that that was caused by an unintentional headbutt, and they're going to go to the scorecards here. At least that's the what we've been told. I think Tate thinks he's the new champion. 
We're going to take a look here again. There's the right hand that caused the cut. But the referee has determined that it's from an unintentional headbutt. So there's some confusion. I don't think the crowd really understands what's going on here right now. Und dann wissen wir das endgültige Ergebnis. And I'm not sure that Thomas Tate fully understands what has happened. Tate trying to get some kind of information. He can't believe what he's hearing. His corner apparently did not know that this was caused by an unintentional HUD button. We're about to go to the scorecards. I've got Tate up 96-95 at the end of 10 rounds. Keep in mind, we're over in Germany. One German judge, one American judge, one British judge. John Coyle being the British judge. There's our old friend from the States, Mr. Kahn, Peter Kahn, living over in Germany right now. There's Wilfred Sauerland, the promoter, seeming cautiously nervous right now. Nobody knows what these scorecards say, or do they? So, everybody anticipating what Michael Buffer already knows, something being whispered into the ear of Sven Aki. And their corner doesn't seem all that concerned. There's his mother. She apparently doesn't know the outcome of this yet either. Thomas Tate saying that was no headbutt. I won't repeat the second time why how he said it wasn't a headbutt. This is family television. It's not him, Thomas. No, he's a pilot. But over right hand. There was no headbutt. No, it's like Spanish. You all right, man. The motherfucking people, man. Very unhappy Thomas Tate right now about the situation. What our tape clearly showed as well was that it was a right hand, not a headbutt. The referee declared it an unintentional headbutt. We're waiting for the scores on the score sheets to find out exactly how the outcome of this fight is. Here's Buffer. Because of an accidental headbutt, the bout is stopped, and we go to the scorecards. John Coyle scores the bout 97-93. Heinrich Mumert scores it 97-93. Mumert den Kampf 97-93. Eddie Cotton scores the bout 96-94. Cotton wertet den Kampf 96 zu 94. For the winner, aus Berlin, Deutschland, and still IBF Super Middleweight Champion of the World, Sven the Phantom Ocha. Well, certainly a popular decision here. What was clearly a, a cut, and we're going to take a look at it one more time, caused by a right hand. They're trying to say that that was the headbutt that caused it. But uh, we're going to take and continue to look at this replay. But it was clearly caused by a punch prior to that, according to our tape. Now they're showing where those two heads came together after the fact. And the referee calls the, the cut, says the cut was caused at that point. But here's the right hand. And we're led to believe it was that right hand that caused the cut at that point. You even saw Michael Buffer in the crowd stand up. Nevertheless, unintentional headbutt. We go to the scorecards. 
About 10 seconds into round number 11 is Marcel Nartz, matchmaker. And uh, scores of 97-93, 97-93, both by Coyle and Mamot, the uh, foreign, the non, excuse me, the German judge, and the American judge, Eddie Cotton, having it 96-94. And 96-94 uh, also, though, for the champion, Sven Aki, who will improve to 16-0. Thomas Tate drops down to 35-6. Very disappointed. Tate clearly thinks he won this fight by stoppage on the cut that was caused by a right hand. Every replay we've seen seems to make us think that as well. But... Uh, a very congenial Svenaki calling Tate over. There's Benedetto Montello. He's the supervisor for the IBF. And uh, fighters, both fighters hugging, but nevertheless, there you've got it. Svenaki is still the IBF Super Cruiserweight Championship of the World. So for everybody at the Cedric Kushner Sports Network, I'm Arnie Tokyo Rosenthal. Good night, Kerry. I'm coming home. <laughs>